Hey guys, I'm Dieter Melhorn. Have you heard of a planer board and don't have any idea what it is, much less how to use it? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about them. All right, guys, these funky contraptions are planer boards. There's a lot of different variations to them. I have done a lot of videos on planer boards. Uh, if you go back through my archives and you search, you'll find videos that I've done on them. Uh, I decided to do a new one because it seems like every time I do one, I leave something out, forget something, and I get those questions later on from people. So I'm going to try to include that uh, in this video. I've used a lot of different ones. These here in particular are made by BCAT. These are BCAT boards. In the other videos, you'll see me using some other different planer boards. Every planer board is a little bit different sometimes it's the foam the flotation that keeps it afloat that's a little bit different sometimes it's these clips this is these clips in the back are the ones that hold the planer board to your line so that if your line breaks you don't lose it sometimes it's the clip up front sometimes these are quick release clips that pull right out when a fish hits it or when you pop it hard and sometimes they're like these and they have a locking mechanism and a little post to keep your line on. Uh, the bottom line is they all work basically the same. Uh, you attach them to your line in two places. Again, one is some kind of clip or a little curly tail thing. The other is at the front. You let them go out as far as you want to. You could put them out 100 feet from the boat if you wanted to. You could stagger them out even closer. Uh, but what happens is when your line goes tight and you quit letting line out, the tip on this thing turns out it pulls this kind of in line when that happens this turns out and starts to swim away from the boat um, you ask yourself well why are you doing this well there's two really good reasons the first one being is that it gives you a wider spread with this thing swimming away from the boat it's going to be further away than a rod that is just going straight out the back so you get a bigger curve coverage area if you're trolling and pulling multiple rods in places where that's legal like it is here, but well, we can run as many rods as we want to, it helps with keeping these, get, these lines from getting tangled up just by having them spaced out more. So that's the reason we use them. Now, planer boards are built for each side of the boat. So if you will notice on the board, there is basically what I would call a bow. Uh, you see it's shaped like the bow on a boat. The back side is like the transom, it's flat. And on the bow, it goes through the water. That's going to be going toward the front. Bow, bow of your boat. The easy way to tell is the release clip is always toward the front. If you look at this one here, you got one for the port and starboard side. This one here is rigged up in a reverse of the other one. You can see, flip them around here they're rigged up opposite. So they would be on the boat like this, lines get tight, they would swim away from the boat. So uh, one thing people ask me, I get them on guide trips, they put them in the water and they're just sitting there. When you first put them in the water and you're letting out line, they're just gonna be like this, okay? They're gonna go just straight. What happens is when you pull that line tight, that's when they turn and that's when they go out. I've told people it's kind of like putting your hand out the window when you're going down the road. If you keep it like that, your hand doesn't do anything. You turn your hand a little bit, it goes that way. It's kind of the same principle behind this. What I'm going to do is take one of these and I'm going to show you basically the process of how I attach it to the line. This seems to be the most confusing part for people. I'm going to try to explain that really, really well this time. What I do is, and this is, I've heard this from people repeatedly on gotcha. So when they see me do it, they go, wow, that is as simple as it looks. And it really is. What you're going to do is say this is baited up. You would just cast this out. You don't have to cast it far. You just need... Just kind of a nice moderate throw. Uh, beginner's cast on a bait caster, just let it sling. You're gonna let it go until it hits the bottom. And that's gonna depend on how deep a water you're in. Watch your line go off, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Still going, I'm in deeper water here. I'm in 30 feet of water. It's gonna take a second for it to get there. But this may sure that you have contact with the bottom. Poof, I think we're there now. Boat's moving along pretty good. Uh, I've got it going a little bit fast just for the effect here. Now, the thing is, you're going to have to make sure you grab the planer board for the right side of the boat. You'll mess this up eventually. I have done it before. It's not a big deal. Your planer board won't swim right. 
you're looking at the side of the boat, you got to make sure that this is pointed toward the bow and that the clips, all the brackets, are facing you because all that gear is toward the boat. So what you're going to do is, first thing, you're going to secure it to the clip. You're going to use that. This one has just a basic clip on the back of it. It's real easy. You put it on there, boom, it's not coming off, okay? Next, you're going to attach this piece toward the rod tip, okay? Remember, it's going this way. So this goes toward the rod tip. You hook it up backwards, bad, because then it will be pointing toward the back of the boat. The bow of your planer board's going the wrong way. You'll do this eventually, you'll get in a hurry, you'll mess it up, it's okay. You're gonna put that clip into there, or put this into the clip, get it in the rubber pieces. Generally, they have some little rubber pieces in there, and boom, on this one, you lock it down. Now, some of them, you just pinch it open. It's just basically a, almost like a, a little paper clip. On this one, it's got a locking mechanism. Now what you're gonna do is, you got the board, all you have to do is drop this board in the water right next to the boat. As you can see, it's gonna go back, 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 back through there. You let out as much line as you want to. And once you knock it in gear, you see lines going out, you'll knock your wheel into gear. At that point, you can see it starts to plane out. How fast it planes out depends on your boat speed. So that one's gonna go out pretty good. I'm toting it down through here doing about a mile an hour. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit to get it more reasonable speed. And I'll go over some things that are real important on planter boards and the speeds at which they operate at. And I bring them back in. If you have release clips, you just pop it real hard and you can bring it in. These flop over onto their side. Sometimes some boards don't do that. They're a pain to get back in, but these come in real easy. I'm gonna drop that in one more time. If you watch my videos, you'll see me flip it out. Uh, a lot of times you can do this. I can get some line and I can flip it out. I'll do that to kind of give it a jump start and get it past some lines. You really don't have to do that. Uh, sometimes I'll already have lines out. I'll catch a fish trying to get it past lines out of the way. But I'll show you one more time. You literally drop it in the water right next to the boat and you just let it go back. Now again, when you bring them in, you just reverse the process. You get it up here, undo this clip, boom, that's gonna pop right off of there. You see there's a little post in there. It's gonna come right off. Take this off, lay it down, and you're good to go. Now one trick is you're probably asking yourself, what happens when you catch a fish? Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get this board up here. The safest, easiest thing to do is to pop this loose, get it off the line, and just let it go down the line. Because remember, it's attached to your fishing line. That is the safest, quickest way without putting any slack in your line. Now, with that said, you have watched any of my videos, you will see me pull these boards completely off. Uh, the reason I do that is, for me getting the fish in is not as critical, but if you're tournament fishing, it's your first fish, it's a personal best, you may want to just do that deal with getting the planer board uh, out of the net and everything later on. Uh, it can be a pain in the butt. It'll get tangled up in the net. Uh, it can flail around there when you're getting up close to the boat, but it's the easiest way not to lose any tension on the line and risk losing the fish. Yeah, when it comes up, because it's clipped onto the line, it stays attached. This one made it actually by the sinker. You take it off, and you're ready to go. Now, another question I get about these planer boards is, can you use them from the bank? You can, if you are in river current, you can use these from the bank. Uh, the problem is guys, if it gets snagged up on something out there and you have to break your line, there's a chance you can lose the board. These things are not cheap. Uh, you can put your phone number on it and hope somebody calls it uh, like they have with mine, but the bottom line is you can lose them. You can use them anchored up in a river from a boat uh, when you've got current. Uh, you can do that and you have a much better chance of getting your board back. It's just something, you, you know, break off. Uh, it's basically the same effect, but instead of the boat moving, 
you've got the water moving past the boat and you can put these things out and swim baits away from them. Another question people have is, uh, what kind of rig do I use? Well, depends on how you want to do this. Uh, I use Santee rigs. It's the reason I use these bigger boards. These bigger boards come in handy when you're dragging a Santee rig that is dragging on the bottom with a couple of ounces of weight. You need something bigger, you need more flotation, and you need a bigger rudder on these things uh, to be able to handle that weight. Uh, you can also use Carolina rigs. You can use a Carolina rig and have it suspended. You can clip this thing on to where this is hanging down, uh, maybe five feet below the surface. Uh, there's a lot of options and a lot of ways you can tweak these things to use them. There is no right or wrong, just one way to do it. Uh, I have seen people run bobbers out behind these. Let them plane out, use a bobber to suspend the bait, fish them that way. So there's a lot of options, a lot of variables here that you can get into when it comes to planer boards. Another thing to keep in mind, guys, is as you've seen in my other videos, I've used some different styles. Every style has a little different effect. These fish differently than some of the other ones. Uh, in my opinion, there is no right, wrong, best. Uh, for what I do and the way I fish, I really like these boards. These things work really good. Now, for your style of fishing, depending on how big your baits are, if you're fishing in river current, all of those variables come into play. It doesn't hurt to have a couple of different styles of planer boards. Some of them are affected by wind more. Some of them plane out at slower speeds. It doesn't have hurt to have a couple of different sets, try them out, see how they work for your style of fishing, and see what is best. All right, guys, hopefully that gives you some good information. As always, if you have questions about this stuff, go to my website, DieterMillhornFishing.com. You can message me on there. I can answer some of these questions and give you some feedback on it and uh, point you in the direction of some of these folks. I'm going to put links to these boards down in the description section if you want to check them out. And uh, as always, we'll catch you out on the water. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good. <laughs>